What is good guys, I'm here with more Circle Jerk Tour, the official Circle Jerk Tour number one. This is round four if I recall correctly. Pog is playing versus Niku and you guys saw I already uploaded Blunder's match for this round. Yeah, Pog is on Blunder's team and if they move on, whoever moves on, the team moves on to a semi-finals. So I'll show the result who moved on at the end because it's already over the round and I'm just gonna catch up and post the replay because I wasn't able to catch it live on Sunday when there was OST Finals and a lot of other games that I recorded for OUPL. But let's um, look at the teams. Pog is using this uh, standard TDK um, balance team. It has, I think, Spadav and Mungus with like Toxic, HP Fire, Spore, and Giga Dread, if I recall correctly. It has Specs, Ash, Greninja, a Scarf Gajan with Toxic. Dragonclaw, Outrage, and Earthquake, Mega Scissor, Standard Default Mega Scissor, Mute, check the Manage Gem, and you see Nico Broader Manage Gem, and this is a uh, fast Zapdos with HP, the Roost, 3 attacks, Heat Wave, and Discharge. And yeah, I haven't actually seen this game, so it will be interesting for me. Let's get right into it. And it leads up with Mew, if I recall correctly, this is uh, Stealth Rocks, Psychic, Will O Wisp, and Roost, Mew, and Nico leads up with a Greninja. Oh yeah, I haven't even talked about Nico's team. Uh, looks like some bulky offense, and this could be all all out attacking Greninja. I could see that protein all out attacking. Oh yeah, he could also be um spikes Greninja rocks on Pharaoh, and then the Landers doesn't have rocks in that. If it's if that's the case, and the Lando could be double dance or maybe SD sub SD to break stall. But yeah, I don't know that. That's just what I'm thinking when I look at his team. But let me see. I assume the Muse gonna switch out into Mungus here. So Mungus is pretty fine switch into all variants of Greninja pretty much. Like it takes Ice Beam because it's Spadav. You see the Greninja reveals the U-turn and we don't see Protein so it's uh, Ash Greninja and probably Spikes. So that reveals the Greninja doesn't have Spikes because in the last slow on Greninja you either run Spikes, U-turn or Ice Beam. Which means it's probably Spikes, Pharaoh and Rocks Landers. And what I just said about the SD Landers is probably not true unless it's Rocks, SD Landers with only two attacks. That's also an option, but then it doesn't have sub or it doesn't have double dance, no rock polish in that case. And yeah, the manage is obviously a thunder punch when it's paired with Tapu Koko to potentially 2 hit kill Mega Sableye after rocks. Like even defensive Sableye. Uh, like if you pair it with like Rocks Clefable. In this case, he has a Ferrothorn or a Landris to as its head etc. So it's probably pretty hard for him to get rocks up with a stall. But yeah, I'm just saying in general. And I think he's gonna. Bring out the Medicham here or the the Latios. You can also go uh, land and get up rocks, but I don't think that's the best play. Let's go Latios and Poig has a Scissor as a switch in or the Mew. Scissor is dangerous in case this is HP fire. Uh, looking at Nico's team, I assume it's a Scarf Latios either with Thunder, Thunder Wave to check Volcarona because he's pretty weak to Volcarona. Yeah, I think it has to be Thunder Wave. Like, it's not the best answer to Volt, but it's. At least you can hope for full paras and stuff, because like para got nerfed this gen, right? The speed, uh, the speed only gets half from the mon if you get paralyzed now, um, and it's only only 90% accuracy. But yeah, Scissor's pretty free here. I don't think it would be HP fire, but Poik can still scout if he wants to. So I guess Mew is Mew is probably Poik's best play. But he stays in with Among Us. Um, Knowing this is probably Scarflady looking at the team, so he can lift his hit. Okay, I really didn't think he would make that play. But yeah, I think he's gonna throw the spore here then if he stayed in. That was aggressive play. So he probably called it and knew he could live it. That has to be Scarflady because it's the death among us unless he changed the spread. I'm kinda surprised that Among Us lifted that, but yeah. Don't underestimate this young Mungus. Young mushroom in the cut. So I'm pretty sure that Poig is gonna double out here because Mungus is passive and he already threw off a spore so Nico has a sleep fodder even though he could have technically prevented it by going uh, Coco there but there was like no way like he couldn't have assumed that Poi would stay in there that was really risky on Poi's part like if this was like um not Scarf Lardy, it was it was not risky in the sense that he knew it was Scarf Lardy looking at the team like I said so but I still can still be get behind the Psyshock play there, even though it's just a safe play. It's just a safe play. I, I probably wouldn't have Psyshock there. I probably would have um, 
If I don't have HP fire on this, I probably would have double out into something that beats the scissor on the Mew. So I probably would have gone Greninja there, put it in the Mew, or I would have gone... Uh, maybe Coco put it in the scissors, yeah. But yeah, he's uh, probably gonna switch out Poik. And I think Niku... Yeah, Niku switches out too into Greninja here, knowing that he wouldn't Giga Drain the Latios, but that was a bit risky because the Latios was asleep. But yeah, he brings in the Mew. Not sure what I predicted there, but Mew can eat up a Dark Post, but there's no point in uh, staying in. So Poik can... he can stay in, but... He has an option to go hard on the Guard Shump, because Outwitch threatens the Greninja and can Oku it. Or he can go on his own Greninja. Um, other than that, it's kind of it's kind of hard. Like I don't think he has good switch-ins, but we'll see. So he decides to go on his own Greninja, which is a dark resist in a sense, but it's pretty frail. So it's, it's, it took that a little bit better than I thought it would. I'm not really sure if that's specs, but it's probably specs. Because like that's the most common set in Ash Greninja, and I just... I just overestimated Greninja for a second. I thought it would do more than 42%. But yeah, Poi can... Like, Poik is Ash Greninja with Spike, so... I don't know, I think Poik is gonna throw up a Dark Pulse or a Spike. He loses the speed, I don't think he gets flinched, he does not get flinched, he throws up a Dark Pulse on his own. So what Poik is gonna do here is just uh, get some damage on this and probably sack off his Greninja. It's like he has, still has no switch and he has to sack his Greninja, he wins the speed right there, so he gets some more damage off and Nico's Greninja gets off the Ash form here, which is pretty nice for him. But it's only at 20%, so Garchomp can revenge with Dranglaw. Exactly, and he's not gonna stay in with the Greninja here, obviously, because it can still put in the work pressure to Mew. Mew's really annoying for his team. Um, because it walls the Medichim. It pretty much walls the entire team, besides the potential trick from Lari that would cripple it, and besides the type of Koku that can do massive damage potentially to the Mew. But yeah, I'd either go to Ferrothorn here or Landris, but Landris is probably a better play, because this could also have a fire move break in the Ferrothorn. So yeah, I go Lander here if I'm Niku, and if I'm Poeg, I double out into either the Mew, this, um, yeah, probably into Amoongus to get more Regenerator. Because yeah, HP Fire to hit the Feral Thorn, and, like, oh, you go, you can go Amoongus, predicting the Feral, and, and you can double out into Zapdos to get more Regenerator, that's a potential play, but yeah. He doubles out into Mew, not into Amoongus, but he predicts the Lander slash Feral Thorn, that would have worked out in both cases, because um, you can throw the will o -Wisp. He doesn't have an immunity. All he has is uh, Laddie, which is asleep, so Mew can go for Stealth Rocks, predicting the Laddie to come out, but you might not want to go to Laddie, fearing this to have knockoff, even though this is a known team. This team is in the forums. Yeah, you, most of you guys probably have this team, but if you don't have it, I can leave the link to the forum page in the description if you're interested in that, but yeah. Um, I assume he's gonna go for will o -Wisp either, or Rocks, but like will o -Wisp is uh, good in the sense if he predicts him to stay in and risking his Lando. Because, like, Liku has the light in the back so he can play some mind games in a sense. I don't think it's worth it for him staying in. I would go Larius every time here. Yeah, I would go 100% Larius here, but we will see what he does. He does just do that, and I assume he was just gonna go for rocks, as it does just do that. Okay, I said that too much. And yet, yeah, is gonna burn a sleep tunnel, he's gonna double. Um, this is his only potential hazard control. I'm not even sure if this has defog, because it would be Scarf defog, which is an option for sure. Uh, Scarf Defog Lottie is not even that bad, but I think he has to have T-Wave and then maybe two attacks Defog or either Trick in the last slot, because his team is not super weak to stall, but it's like kind of weak to stall. Like Medicham Electric Terrain can kind of annoy stall, but it gets trapped by Ducky eventually. Like even if it can potentially two it kill the Sableye, if the Sableye is the death it, for sure. Uh, if the Sableye is the death especially is what I meant to say. But he decides, decides to burn his sleep turn, so Poik has a lot of momentum here, even though he's in the back 5-6. He has rocks up, and he can get, go for a free U-turn pretty much to get off the Mega Evolution, and Scissor gets more bulk that way, and can live a high jump kick from Medicham. And he decides to, um, I don't know if U-turn Okos, yeah, it actually lives the U-turn, because it's a defensive Scissor. But yeah, the Sladi dies to rocks now, so I'm not too sure. Like, that was a tough spot for Neek, because if he switches out, like, his other plays were going Ferrothorn or Landris to get some chip on the Scissor with Helmet or Iron Barbs, but 
he loses momentum that way. Like if he goes Landros, the Zapdos comes in and the Zapdos is really annoying for him. Because it has HPIs and it has Heatwave for the Feral Zone. And that Coco is kind of red and with rocks up, Coco doesn't want to switch in. Magic obviously doesn't want to switch in, like so that's also kinda of tough for him, no matter what he did. Like if he switched, Zapdos just came in, if he stays in he almost dies and he doesn't gain much, like unless he wakes up here. Oh, nah, wait, wait, wait. I said unless he wakes up here, but... He obviously didn't wake up there, I don't know what I was saying there. Pause it real quick, I don't know if I recorded everything. But yeah, we obviously saw the Lottie move first, so... Like, Poik didn't risk anything there. It was just a slow and safe U-turn into Amoongus to get more regenerator. Which is a really good play to get the Amoongus back healthy, so he can take the... Uh, Coco on a bit better and he can take gyro balls from Feral, throw out HP fires versus dad and take a hit spec stock pulse from Ashgren. So he doubles out, probably just going back into Scizor and Mew here. He goes into Scizor and he can just uh, U-turn again because this can't do anything else, he's random HP fire scarf which is not a not the case. He says no there in the chat because he didn't wake up. So, uh, gonna decide to go into Feral Thorn on the bullet punch. Nice poke. Doesn't want to take any damage on his scissor, so he decides just to bullet punch the Lari because he knows the Lari dies to rocks if it switches out, so that makes sense. So this Ferrothorn is going to go for Leech Sheet or Spikes here. I assume he's going to throw, start throwing up a Spike here. Like he wants to get up some hazards on his own because rocks on his side are annoying. Uh, so yeah, Zapdos is a good play there. He goes for Leech Sheet though, so the Heatwave is pretty obvious. If this doesn't have Protect, he's going to switch out. Um, either going to sack off his Lari. I think, I think sacking his Lari is his only play here. Unless he wants to go hard Coco and let that take a hit, which is probably not that smart. He decides to go hard Coco. I mean, I guess he has the Leech Seed uh, going for him, so the Coco will get some health back. But Seed Wave should do like 30 40%. It has 47. I forgot this is max special attack Zapdos, yeah. So this Coco is around half after Leech Seed 55. And it obviously threatens the Zap, doesn't beat the Bombing one. So Poix is probably gonna go Moongus, and this Coco I assume is gonna go for U turn or Volt Switch. And he can also just T Bolt. But he just wants the momentum. He's in the back, kinda. Okay, he goes for Nature's Madness, which is understandable to weaken this a bit, but it has, it has regenerated anyway, so I don't know if the, I would have made that play. I probably would have made the Volt Switch or U turn one, but depending on what move he has, probably would have made that play. And if he doesn't have U turn or Volt Switch, which pro um, I think every Coco carries U turn or Volt Switch, at least one of the two. U-turn is more common for Duck Trio because you can U-turn out of Duggy so you don't get trapped unless they are Scarf Duggy. And yeah, if you didn't have U-turn of Voltage for some reason, I would have doubled out, breaking the Among Us, uh, double out into Medicham. But yeah, even then, that doesn't do anything for Nico because he's rocks on his side. So if he doubles, he takes rocks, and Poi can just bring in the Mew on the Medicham. So like, Poi is just in a really good position here. Like, I guess he could have doubled into Landris and tried to get up Hazards to somehow come in back into this, but yeah, we'll see what happens now as this cannot go for a Spore, obviously, since Zali's already asleep, but also if he didn't have a Sleep Forder, there's Electric Terrain up. Electric Terrain would, in Electric Terrain you can only put Pokemon in the air to sleep, which would be Latios and Landris in this case, but yeah. Just for some standard information, most of you guys know that anyway. But yeah, he's gonna sack off, uh, I assume it's Latios here? Oh, he's gonna go Pharaoh, so Pharaoh's is an option. He goes Landris. Didn't think he would have made that play. As uh, he gets crit by a Giga Drain there, which uh, that's definitely annoying, but I don't think it matters that much in the long run since Poik has been playing this well and he's uh, definitely ha he definitely has the upper hand. Like this Landris is gonna throw up the rocks obviously because he has to start to put some pressure on Poik and like punish these switches at least that Poik can do for free at the moment. He goes hard in the Zapdos. This is an HPI Zapdos. I don't think Pork has a reason to predict here. He's probably gonna sack the Lottie. He goes hard Coco again. I don't know if I agree with that play. I mean, he gets it correct, but now his Coco is pretty much dead. And... I mean, honestly, no matter what he did here, I don't think he can... I don't think he can win this, as long as Pork plays it well. Um, but yeah, Pork would have sacked the Lottie. I can understand uh, wanting to keep it as fodder, but like... Now your Coco is dead to rocks, and he has to save switch in Among Us always, so like, unless this is Brave Bird, but then it would die, kill, him, kill itself anyway. And Poet makes him um, not even a risky play there, like, the Electric Terrain were out, were off, so 
Uh, Zapdos would have taken the T Ball easily and killed the Coco. He's gonna probably HP IC and not wanting to risk Heat Wave. He can also Discharge. Discharge works too. Getting potential para on anything that switches in, even though he doesn't have good switchings, like I stated multiple times. So I think he has to sack the Lari this time. So yeah, you guys can see what I what I what I said there. Like I don't know why I didn't just sack the Lari in the first place. Cause like he should have known that Electric Terrain were out. I didn't think about that earlier. Like Going Coco didn't do anything for him there. He just took unnecessary damage on the Coco. And yeah, if he went to sack the Lari first, I think he could have gone Coco and the Terrain would have gone back up, but even if it didn't, he can act accordingly and then bring out something else. Like probably Medichimps is if the Electric Terrain isn't up, Medichimp is basically his only play to threaten this. Uh, or Ash Greninja. At the range this is at after rocks, Ash Greninja probably kills with Hydro Pump too. But yeah, he has to predict kinda because the Amongus just comes in on Hydro Pump for free, so. He could have clicked Dark Pulse instead. Let's see, yeah. Like, Poi can probably. Garchomp can probably take one specs. Dark Pulse, but it can't take it well at all, and I don't know if Poi would want to make that play. He, he, he would obviously go um, Amongus if he would have gone Grin there. But yeah, I think we're gonna see the Greninja or the Coco here. Automatic Champ, like those are three options, but I think we're gonna see the Greninja. Exactly, and he kinda has to go for Dark Pulse here, because Hyrule Pump is resisted by Amongus, exactly. Amongus comes out. And Dark Pulse, and it gets to it, girl. As Specs, Ash Greninja is just a beast, and he either has to sack this Amongus here or go hard into Garchomp and let it take a huge, huge hit, which is um, smart on Poix and I feel not going hard Garchomp, because Scarfchomp can pretty much clean up late game. It just needs a little bit more. Uh. Now the Landis is pretty much in 2 hit kill range, it can switch in. Ferrothorn is the only thing that stops the Garchomp from spamming. Like Ferrothorn and Coco are like the only things that stop. Because otherwise Garchomp could just spam Dragon Claw. Like, I mean if the, if the land was gone it can spam Earthquake, so there's that. But Ferrothorn eats that up still. Like, he still has to... um. Predict correctly with the Garchomp. The Garchomp doesn't have Fire Blast and uh, Fire Fang, as Nico probably knows that. So, at the moment, Garchomp can win, but late game, like I said. And he's gonna bring out the Scarf Garchomp here 100% because this dies to rocks if it switches out. So that's the. Okay, 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 okay. I thought Garchomp was the play because you know this is locked in. But yeah, Scissor and Bullet Punch also works out. Scissor on Bullet Punch works out too, but um, yeah, if he goes first on now, you take the potential Iron Barbs, this is a bit annoying. But yeah, if he would have gone Garchomp, I feel like um, it would have kind of been the same scenario, because then if you go for Dragon Claw, you also take Iron Barbs, and if you go for Earthquake, there's a potential Landers that comes in for free, so I can understand going Scissor, but he has to be P here. He doesn't want to take a big Dark Pulse on this. If he predicts them and goes for Roost here, Poke is an absolute overlord, but. He just sacks off the Coco, which is understandable, and he's just gonna bullet punch, yeah. There's no way he roosts on that turn. Medicham should kill the scissor from 76. As oh, that's surprising that he decides to stay in there. I thought Mew could switch in here, but I guess he doesn't need the scissor. This, the Greninja dies to rocks, his opponent doesn't have hazard control at this point. I have. Zapdos pretty much beats those two, so... And Scarf Jump, uh, yeah, also looking pretty nice. Yeah, he can go into Mew afterwards. I think he's gonna go for Eugenia. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. now he's probably just gonna go for Bullet Punch to get up some chip on this. But yeah, we will see what happens. He goes for a Bullet Punch that probably brings this in range from Dragon Claw. So I can understand it in that sense. And the Medicham is going to HJK here, pick off the Scissor, as the Scissor actually eats that up, so this might be, um, yeah, it is, it is Bolt Scissor, or whatever, uh, Impish, however you call it, like, plus defense, because otherwise there's no way to eat that. I saw that kill as well. So this is actually 2 kills with Medicham. I think we're going to see the Pharos on here. So I could pull, uh, I could see Poe roosting here, breaking the switch, because, like, there's no way you just sack your Medi. Yeah, he goes into Ferrothorn. Did Poik predict that? He did. Makes the nice play in Roosting. I mean, that was a little bit risky, quote unquote, but on Poik's side, but it was definitely the right play. Mm -mm -mm. And now it is 
Feral Thorn is. I think gonna go for Spikes to try and force the Scissor to defog to get at least mm, the hazards off of Nigo's side. But yeah, we'll see. Scissor go for Roost. Okay, on the Leech Seed. But yeah, now he's definitely gonna either. Okay, now he can double Leech Seed, break the U turn slash hard switch out. So I don't know if I would have U turned there. Because that little bit of chip damage on Ferrothorn, I mean, chip damage on Ferrothorn is nice for sure, but Leeches is just gonna heal it back anyway in le or leftovers. Like, that only did 22%. I think getting up a spike is the play here, but we will see. Zapdos pretty much alone wins this game, besides the Medicham. He goes for Lich Seed, which is understandable. Um, from full, I don't. Actually, yeah, this doesn't level heat wave from full, because this is offensive Zapdos. So it's only play second in Greninja here, I think. Goes hard into Medicine, which is a bit risky. Uh, yeah, it dies, so. It didn't. It really didn't matter what he did, but I would have sacked the Greninja there. It really didn't matter. And yeah, he just forfeits, because, like, he can't do anything. This dies to rocks, this dies to heat drift, this dies to HPIs. Medicine was the only thing he had to revenge this. And. I don't even know if Medicine would have outsped this, because this is a max speed Zapdos, and the Medicine probably adamant. That's pretty common, but the uh, Electric Terrain T-Punch to break um, Sableyes that don't run enough defense, like I said earlier. And yeah, he had uh, Mew in the back to wall the Medicham. Could have sacked out the Scissor if he didn't want to go hard into Mew. And yeah, he also had Scarf Garchomp to revenge Medi. But yeah, Zapdos was the most important member for for Poik, um, cause it the Ferrothorn otherwise would have been super annoying. He had to like wisp like he would still beat the Ferrothorn with wisping with, with the Mew. And then like PP stalling it kinda and switching around, but it would have been super annoying, like. So it was important that Poi kept his Zapdos, so he played that well definitely. And um Poik wins this Blunder one uh, one game for his team and we'll uh, go to the Smogon forums and look at the score. So yeah, here we are, the official Circle Jerk 2-1 round 4. As you see, um, Blunder and Poik won their games. Uh, TDK lost versus Real FV13, Flaming Team probably. It's, uh, it's not Flaming Team, but this guy is called Real Flaming Team 13. Um, and the other two games didn't even they didn't even play them out. So like the score is two and one for Blunder's team, but usually you have to win uh, three games because it's like best of five. So you have to win three games to ensure that you're in the next round. But I think they were given the win, or just they didn't play the games. So let me see why. Um, I will find out. I will find out. See, so Finchinator posted that John and Kratos games go dead due to lack of contact. So they just didn't, they just didn't want to play, or they, they, maybe they were pretty busy with real life stuff, so they didn't find time to play. So yeah, the series goes in their favor, two and one. Poik didn't post his victory, but he won his match. Yeah, you guys know, like even if there was any, the replay was obviously saved because Smokto is always saved replays, and yeah. Now everyone knows that Poik won because I uploaded this. Uh, at least everyone who watches my channel and... I'll try to catch some of the games live for the semi-finals. I'll actually go um, see if I can find the thread for that real quick. So yeah, I'm here with the... I don't know what happened to my dimensions. I don't know if you guys can see my entire screen now or if you can only see a few parts of it. Or if you can... If it's a black screen, but yeah, I'm here in the thread for the, the semi finals of official Circle Jerk 2 1. And you can see the last minutes is paired up with the Johnny Tortellini gang, which is Blunder's team. And we have interesting, um, in some interesting names here. We have the Thorn versus Poex. So there's some, um, they were both in SPL. Uh, Sabala was in SPL, he's playing with his Blunder. So I hope I can catch that live. TDK versus ZF. I don't know these guys, but yeah, I know John is. Uh, Brofist, he changed his smoke name to John, if I recall correctly. He's playing Star. I think this is a Little Cup player. I, I think he was an SPL, or do I, did I mix him up with Star Master? Not sure. And Pogis is, I think, an Ubers player mainly, but he also plays Sun and Unoyu. Uh, he's playing with Anti, aka Kratos Manor, and. That is the semi finals, and the other player was the winner of this. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really know these other guys besides I know Sakura a bit, he's French if I recall correctly, and I know Zorodark, he was an old T if and what else? There was, he was in some other tour, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, Tony, oh yeah, I also know Tony obviously he was in SPL and stuff and he's playing in OUPL. So yeah, I'll see how many games I can catch, I don't really know. If not live, I can... We, we have replays, we have the technology these days, but I uh, obviously know that replays are not that exciting. Other than that, let me let me guys know how you like that PTB made a guest upload. I'm not sure if the guest upload PTB made will go up before or after I'm recording this. But yeah, that's... He probably, like, he... um. Uploaded his run for his circle joke tour. Like we only recorded one game so far, and yeah, it's just him in the video. I cut my voice out. Like I let him talk because it's his games. He knows what he, what his plays were, and he can explain them pretty well. So I hope you guys like that idea that he will post his other games. I think he has five more games, and oh, I only up already uploaded him twice. Other than that, stay tuned for OUPL and I'll probably bring OU Circuit if possible on Saturday. Poker DCG game where the guard is playing. And I'll see what other tournaments I'll potentially catch. But yeah, the main thing is World Cup, which is in like two weeks. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah, Poker's just pretty solid at Sun and Moon, one of the best Sun and Moon OUers, even though he lost to Alof League, which. I think it was 0-2, but it was kind of... One game was kind of hexy, but the yeah, league definitely deserved that win. We had a great run too. Um, I don't remember if it was top 8. I think Poik lost in top 8. And yeah. Anyways, I am Doc, which I'm signing out. I don't know why I said my name. That that's it's not that's not how it's pronounced. Oh, by the way, my name is doesn't have any meaning. I made my name when I was like 12 or 13 when I made my YouTube, and. I just typed in random number like letters in German that came to mind. I, it doesn't have a meaning in German. It's basically I just typed in, in German. You pronounce it Dockerich. In English, in, but I like I um, think when I made a comment on Flame Victini's channel when Flame Victini's channel was riddle, um, really s um, small. He only had like 100 subs. I made a comment and made like some suggestion and he like read it out and he pronounced it Dockerich and ever since then. I call people to pronounce it that because I kind of liked it, how that sounds in English, but yeah, it usually was Dockerich in German. But yeah, it doesn't really have any meaning, doesn't have anything to do with rich or anything like that. It's just some f name because I was trying to call me like, I gave, like typed in my real name and stuff or just like fun stuff that came to mind how to call my YouTube and all was taken. And yeah, that's just some backstory if you guys are interested in that. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'm out. Hope you are uh, hyped for the upcoming content and I got my Rex by the way. I got my Rex 40 and 7. Did pretty well, did pretty well. Um, took me 3 hours I think because I fucked up a few hours. I could have made Rex on those hours but I was like 60, uh, 36 and 8 on one alt and I was like that's some awful win loss ratio. We're starting over, we're starting over, I don't care. But yeah, I'll probably vote ban on Metagross, let me, I don't know. Getting some hate from some people for voting ban. I think it's probably gonna stay anyway. I feel like it's gonna be 50 50 votes. But yeah, Melgosh is just too much. If it didn't have medium mesh, maybe I would uh, think otherwise about it. It's just kind of restricting to team building, and I don't wanna get too much into this. I was just making my outro, and yeah, peace out, friends. I don't know why I got into that at the end. Hope you all enjoyed.